<laughs> Mark, you've just become a father. How do you feel? Do you feel different? Um, I'm still wanting to feel different, but I'm still wanting to grow up, you know. And I haven't done that yet. No, it's lovely. I helped deliver the baby as well. Mm. It's called Roland Bolan. Roland Seymour Bolan. And um, he weighed about six six when he came out. And it was really cute, because I mean, it's, it looks like me, so mm. it was really... And it's an amazing thing. Yeah, won't I'm you hoping it's going to stabilise me somehow. Yeah. You, you weren't freaked out by, by the actual birth? Not really, because uh, there are, there's no blood and all that sort of stuff. I thought it would be very gory and uh, surrealistic, but it wasn't. In fact, it was very ordinary. It's just a miracle, mm. I reckon. Babies, mm. are, you know, they just plop out. Yeah. You know. And he came out dancing. He was, uh, <laughs> he was getting down. Really. Well, now, here you are. You're really one of the biggest names in showbiz. Back when you were 14 and you were working on a fruit stall in right, Soho... Right. Little boy, yeah. <laughs> did you ever dream, did you ever hope that you'd be here now? Uh, yes, I dreamed, but I never really thought it was possible. Uh, the funny thing about success, though, is uh, they never tell you what's going to happen when you get there. You know, and the hardest thing about being successful is remaining successful. And I've been very fortunate in that way. And um, I can thank the fans in Australia for that, for, for still sticking with me and people in England. Because, um, as you know, I've been away for two years from England mm. uh, for tax reasons, tax exile. Mm. As everyone else, Elton and Rod, all these people have gone now, you see. But, um, it enabled me to go away and really just sort of cool the situation. Because mm. as we spoke about, I thought I was being overexposed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, along with that Donny uh, and David and all that, that teeny bop thing. Which is cool. I mean, I love being screamed at and ripped apart. But um, as long as people listen to the music as well, mm. you know. So it's given me kind of a fresh thing now. I've come back now. And um, fortunately, New York City was a big hit. I don't know, is it coming to Australia? I don't know if it's been released there yet. Right. No. Well, that, it'll be out yeah. soon. And, um, and in fact, over here, I've got a new one this week called Dreamy Lady, which mm. comes out. So everything is really going very well. You know, couldn't be better at the moment. Well, when you started climbing to the top, was it the climbing, music? Climbing, clawing. <laughs> <laughs> was it the music or was it the glamour? What was the main attraction for you? For me, uh, music at mm. first. Um, but I think it's inseparable. I mean, I was, when I was about nine, I wanted to be Elvis, you know. And uh, then it was Marlon Brando. And then eventually it became Mark Bowen. I wanted to be, you know, because mm. um, so I invented him that way. Yeah. You were into glamour, really. You were one of the first mods, weren't you? you were oh, yeah, yeah. That was when I was about 15, things. yeah. 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 We, that was, I was in all the papers then as a mod. I mean, I've been famous four times in my yeah. life, actually, over a period but of time. First as a mod and then First mod. as a mod and then as a model. I did some modelling things for a while. And then in 65, I made my first single called The Wizard. Mm. So you put out a record called Wizard, but there really was a wizard in your life, wasn't there? Yeah, I used to know a guy um, in Paris who, in fact, was... Uh, he would be called a black magician, I suppose, but he wasn't. Um, he's just a very learned man. He was mm. into uh, numerology and uh, Egyptian magic. And I learned... Uh, he could levitate, you know, go off the floor. And he really could do it. Can, you? Are, can I? No, no. Only when I'm drunk. <laughs> you know, it's very easy to flirt. Um, I studied yoga for a while. So that was kind of helpful. I mean, I, I, I can uh, act, project astrally, I can leave my body and come back. But um, I was very into magic, but uh, what happened was I had to earn a living in between, you see. So uh, I chose music as the only thing I really knew anything about mm. and that I cared about. And I just worked very hard at it through the years. And, you know, I decided to write my songs, my own songs, after hearing Dylan, I think it was, um, before he in fact got big, that was about 63. And I thought, if uh, he can sing like that, I can play guitar that bad, I can do it, you know. And I mean that in the nicest way, because yeah. yeah, he's, he's one of my faves, you know. Um, and it took probably four years to get it really tight. And then I formed Tyrannosaurus Rex, which was me and a bongo player, a guy called Steve at that time. And fortunately, we, uh, the, the album got in the charts. I mean, it was like an instant success, you know. And uh, I stayed as an underground group for, I think, about four years. Um, and then it, it got a bit down. I mean, th the records weren't selling quite so well. So I figured I'd take one chance and really go electric. And I did a song called Ride a White Swan. And it was number one in, I think, four days. Sold two million records. Was Thank God. I mean, yeah. or I'd still be down in the market. It was a big change from first underground. And then you, you, got, you did get a teeny bop image, didn't you? Oh, yeah. What happened is I did uh, Top of the Pops, which is probably the equivalent to this show or whatever mm. it was. Uh, and uh, I was exposed to the mass public for the first time. Mm because they'd never seen me on TV or anything. Unfortunately, they liked the way I looked or something about me, or they liked the way I wiggled or, you know, the cut of my jib, or whatever they call it. And um, 
from then it's really been six years of, of good times, really. Mm. Hopefully six more as well. Yeah, well, now that's another thing. Do you want to go on as you are, or are you going to get into movies? What uh, I, it's changing slowly. Um, uh, at this point of time, I'm doing um, an interview spot on a show in London. Um, in fact, today I'm doing Keith Moon, I'm doing Angie Bowie, um, we're doing, I'm doing Freddie Mercury of Queen. It's talking, you know, mm. exp- so that people can see that uh, what hopefully they're seeing from this show, that rock stars are hopefully mildly intelligent people or incredibly intelligent, whatever, you know, see really what they're like and what the kids are buying. And um, I'm also doing a movie uh, next year with David Bowie, with, you know, because we've written a science fiction film together, because we're great mates, you know. Mm. So I'll, I'll definitely be doing films. I'll be directing that one too. Um, but I, I want to spend at least this year um, getting back on the road. Mm. Um, we, we go to Australia, I believe, about, what's after February? The month after March. February? March. Yeah, because we do January, and then after that I'm doing the, the rest of the world. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come and see everyone in Australia in March. That's if you want to see us. We'd like to come. You write also, don't you? You've, you've put out books of poetry, it's a slim volume. Yeah. Um, I had... Um, it's been out about five years now, but it was... Uh, I was England's best-selling poet for about a year. It's a book called Warlock of Love. Yeah. And I've got a new book coming out, hopefully, within the month which is, at the moment, it's called Wilderness of the Mind, but I don't know, I change it every day. I mean, you know, it could be a coconut egg tomorrow or anything, <laughs> you know. How do you fit so much into your life? You're, I mean, you've got your own business. You're not a rock star who's being manipulated by anyone else. You're in charge. You write books. You, you're into everything. How do you do it all? Um, I, I, Foster's I, love. <laughs> <laughs> I know, um... Just energy, really. I mean, I, I get days when I'm terrible. I'm very disorientated. But I'm very quick at doing things. Like, I'm a Libra, you know, and I go very up and then very down. Um, but I have a lot of good people around me that carry out what I say, you know, and help me. Mm. Publicists and uh, managers, you know, that, that in fact put it into action. So what happens is I just wander about doing all the things that have been arranged the week before that I said I wanted to do, you know. But do you work always on the verge of a nervous breakdown? Or yes, you make sure totally. You, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm always cracking up all the time. Yeah. You once sent along to psychiatrists for some reason. What was oh, that no, about? Yeah, well, I wanted to check out. I was in New York, and they get analysed a lot there, you know? And uh, I wanted to go to a shrink and see what they'd think. You know, I went to three of them, and they all uh, couldn't handle it. They, they, they couldn't handle <laughs> me at all. You know, because I believe... I don't, I don't, unless you've got... The, uh, this guy called R.D. Lang, he's really yeah. good. But um, he's about the only one I think that can understand people. Because they asked me to give impressions and say what I thought against words, and they said, oh, come on, you know. <laughs> I said, mother, I said, toad, things like that, you know. But, I mean, because there is no, I don't believe in, in things instantly relating or mm. deep Freudian meanings. I believe you are literally what you are, if you're anything at all. And, and if you should really project what you are and be strong, you know. Well, now, even now, this very moment, there are fans clustering outside your office door. Listen. Does this get on your nerves at all? Um, sometimes, you know, but at the moment they don't know where I live, fortunately. Uh, but not really. I mean, some of them are very cute. You were one of the first rock artists who got into the bisexual trip. I gather you're not... Artiste is kind of... <laughs> sounds very bisexual. You're not really bisexual, I gather. Um, I've, I've experienced many things in my life. I think, you know, as a child, my mother always told me that um, if you love someone uh, in any sphere, you know, love them all the time. I love many men and many women, but I happen to like titties, so I tend to sexually go more towards women. Mm. But I've checked everything out. Mm. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't just an, an image when you oh, were being no. bisexual. You really were at the No, time. David Bowen and I were going to get married at one time. We, you know, mm. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs>